Chao Zhe-Lok, a second-year undergraduate at Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, died after he fell from a car park early on November 4th near an area of confrontation between protests and police. The news caused grief across the city. But who was the murderer? To answer this question, we should first know why Chao Zhe-Lok entered the car park near midnight. One of Chao's friends, identified as Chi Cheng, told local media outlet in Etim that she had been keeping touch with Cho through Telegram that night. 凌晨十二点几，常德村外边有人聚集，堵塞入村嘅路。CCTV showed that around 150 black-clad protesters were throwing hard objects at the intersection of Tong Ming Street and Tong Chuan Street. Then the police arrived. Cho sent two messages to Chi at 30 and 12:30 a.m., saying that the police waved a black flag, an orange flag, which is in line with the footage provided by Hong Kong Cable TV. The car park is a perfect place to observe police moving, as it closes to the gathering site and has wide open area. Cho's behavior made him more like a member of the Sentinel Group rather than an ordinary citizen. According to several clips, Cho first entered the car park through the Beverly Garden overpass at 12:26 a.m. He was later seen walking around at the car park at 12:38 a.m., 12:47 a.m., and 12:49 a.m. respectively. An FTM suggested that Cho sent a photo to Chi at 12:46 a.m., which was believed to be taken from the second floor of the car park. Riot police were standing at the intersection at Tang Chuan Street, and no tear gas was seen in the picture. Cho left the car park through the overpass and then came back, entering the third floor at 1 a.m. A protester who was Cho's close friend said Cho was a park hour practitioner. All of those information can confirm Cho was acting as a sentinel using his park hour skills. It's obviously that he showed up at the car park in Blackshear that night. Was report his group about police actions. Then let us try to answer the biggest question: Why did he fall from the building? Some of the writers claimed Cho was pushed off the building by the police. Was that really what happened? An ETM media interviewed some of the Cho's ill luck friends, and they provided two vital facts. Cho's phone was last appeared online at 1 a.m., and he sent the last text message at 12:46 a.m. This information matched the time frame shown in the released CCTV footage. The CCTV footage showed the police was not at a present in the car park during this period. The police first entered the car park before Cho arrived, and came again after Cho had fallen from the building. Nobody showed having any physical contact with Cho Zhilong. It's impossible that the police pushed him off the building. The only possibility how Cho fell from the building was, as a park hour practitioner, he assumed there was a platform behind the wall and he jumped over. He fell into death accidentally. In fact, he was not the only one that assumed there was a platform behind the wall. The CCTV footage showed at 12:52 a.m. a man showed up on the third floor. Walked towards where Cho had fallen. He leaned over the wall, looked down, and left. At 1:59 a.m., after Cho had been sent to the hospital, a man wearing a white T-shirt and black pants was shown running towards the wall and jumping over it. He then quickly discovered there was no platform behind the wall. He turned around, held on the wall, and moved towards the left. He then held on to a beam and climbed back to the third floor. Fortunately, he had not become the second Cho Zhilong. This leaves the last question. The writers claimed the police delayed the emergency medical response for 20 minutes. Was this true? The fire services headquarters pointed out that at 1:10 a.m. there was an ambulance nearby. The license plate was A492. This ambulance was called to treat a patient suffered from a shortness of breath at Kuangying House. 
When it arrived at the intersection, someone asked the ambulance crew to treat a head injury at Kwanlun House first. The emergency call for Cho came in one minute later. The license plate of the ambulance sent for him was A344. Before this ambulance reached the intersection, it had to make a detour at Kwantam House. It arrived at Kwangin House at 1.20 a.m., but the road was blocked by private cars and fire engines. The ambulance crew had to walk to the scene. To put it simply, the ambulance sent to treat Cho Zilok was not delayed due to the police. It was repeated blocked by roadblocks set up by the riders. It had to make two detours, and the ambulance crew had to reach the scene on foot. This meant that people who were responsible for delaying the emergency medical response were the riders themselves. The riders knew full well about that Chao Zhe Luke's intention to use his park hour skill to act as a sentinel for the riders, that his death was an accident. However, the riders used this tragedy as a propaganda tool. They started working immediately, produced posters, and wrote social media posts, slandering the police. Bearing the truth for the sake of political purposes, they sacrifice human lives without blinking an eye. Let's stand up and say no. Don't let our city gear into chaos where they are full of hatred and violence.